today we have with us coach John John Turco, who uh, um, just recently has been inducted into the Curbstone Coaches Hall of Fame and uh, has been a coach in in uh, the Mahoning Valley and surrounding areas for decades. Um, and uh, you know, kind of going through the um, this podcast and talking so much about the city and and particularly uh, the, the the run that Rain had leading up to Ron taking over, the success that Rain was having um, at the beginning of Ron's career. Um, you know, we 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 had kind of talked a little bit. Uh, Ron and and John um, kind of talked and chatted about coming on and, and doing something together. So you know, here we are. And uh, Coach Turco, maybe you could just give us a little bit of background on um, some of your your history and and where you started and and how you ended up coaching football in the city. Oh, how I ended, I ended up in the city. I started teaching. Well, I. I uh, graduated from NC State, and I played football for North Carolina State, and uh, then I uh, uh, d- decided that uh, after three and a half years, I had a degree, and uh, but it was a degree in recreation parks administration because all football players were dumb, according to North Carolina, and uh, uh, so uh, I decided to get an education education degree because I had two more years of football and uh, I did manage to get that and uh, but that was during uh, a, a time in our country where Vietnam was on and they were they were uh, 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 there was a forced uh, entry into the army navy or whatever you wanted to do so I decided that uh, I would uh, choose the Navy. So I joined the Naval Reserve. And as long as you made C's, you weren't going to get called up. And uh, what I didn't know at the time is they said, well, what do you want to be? And I said, I don't know. I don't want to do all this saluting and stuff. And they said, oh, you'd be a hospital corpsman. And I said, oh, okay. Well, when I graduated after two years uh, with the education degree, I, of course, had a naval obligation. So they said, well, now you're going to be an officer. And I said, oh, no, that's that's a five-year stint. I said, I just want to go in as a hospital corpsman, and I'll, I'll you know, I'm, I'm good with that because then I can start my teaching and coaching career. And uh, uh, they said that, that would – that was okay, but I ended up in Vietnam because I was a hospital corpsman. Uh, after I got out, uh, I went back to uh, where my roots were in western Pennsylvania because I was born in Newcastle, and uh, uh, I went to, uh, I, I went back and uh, I got a job at Mohawk. Now there was a lot of jobs open for teachers at that time. Uh, and especially the city. The city was, oh, my goodness, I could have been, I could have been anywhere. And in fact, I uh, I interviewed with uh, uh, Mady. I think he was the coach then. John Matthew said, uh, you can get an interview with Ed Mady. You can be an assistant over here. And uh, God rest his soul. Uh, Ed said to me, he says, you're too ambitious. He said, you'll leave right away. And and I said, well, I, I said, I'm, I'm just telling you the truth. And, and uh, at any rate, uh, we uh, 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 ended it there. And I coached at Mohawk for seven years, four of those years as the head coach. Uh, then I applied for the RAN job. And uh, uh, Phil Anarella also applied, and a score of other people, but uh, Phil got the job. And and uh, I called John uh, Matthew, and I said, hey, how come, uh, how come I didn't get that job? And uh, he said, well, you never coached any African-American kids, and he did. He was at uh, East Liverpool. And uh, I said, okay, I can understand that. Uh, thank you very much. And he said, wait a minute. He said, 
uh, what do you make as a coach over there? And I said, well, I, I make about $1,800. He says, you can make that as an assistant in Youngstown and, and more. And uh, I said, well, uh, what do you suggest? And he said, well, uh, you come over to Youngstown and uh, uh, you can be an assistant. What school do you want to be at? And I said, I don't care. Put me at the school that has the most African-American children and I'll be the coach. I'll get experience. And he said, well, that would be East High School. So that's where I ended up at East High School for two years with Gus Lavovi. And then the RAND job opened because Phil left and went to Warren. And uh, I applied for the RAND job and I got it. And uh, uh, that, was, that was a real turning point for me. It was great. It was super. I loved being in Youngstown. Was that, um, I think I read 1978 was when you became head coach of Rain. Is that accurate? Yes, it was 1978. Okay. Who did you take over from uh, Mohawk? Al Boji? Yeah, Boji, Boji taught me everything I knew about football. <clears throat> Boji was the, one of the greatest coaches that people didn't know about. And, yeah, I coached, uh, I, I coached and, with Al at Campbell for a year. Yeah, he was. He was fantastic. Just a great, great guy. I, 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 his, his last years and last month and days, I spent at his bedside uh, visiting him uh, uh, in a nursing home uh, on Western Reserve Road and uh, making sure that he was okay. And he knew who I was, you know, he, he didn't know a lot of stuff at that point, but he knew who I was. And he coached at Kennedy with me too. The kids used to call Al Yoda. And that was <laughs> when Star Wars came out, but you know, he was such a little guy and he had all that hair uh, on, on the sides of his head. <laughs> right, right, right. But, but uh, yeah, uh, the kids just loved him over at uh, uh, Kennedy. Yeah. Yeah, he was a good, great guy, great guy. Yeah, very. It, it taught me everything I know. I, I, when I, I first got married, and, and uh, he said to me, he says, John, he says, what's troubling you? And uh, I said, well, my wife is complaining that I've put too much time in coaching. And he says, oh, well, then you got to get a dog. And I says, you mean for my wife? And, you know, Al was such a jokester. And uh, I said, uh, what do you, you know, will a dog keep her company? He says, no, no, no. He says, when you come home and you open the door, who's going to meet you at the door? And I said, well, probably the dog. He said, that's right. And the first thing you do is kick that dog and yell at him. And then your wife won't think you're having good time coaching you that you're coming home mad and upset <laughs> i said you're crazy but that was al he always had a joke did you get the dog we did get the dog and, uh, but uh, i never kicked the dog of course <laughs> yeah yeah um no so 1978 um ron i think you started at cheney in 79 so 77. Oh, as an assistant. As an assistant. Okay. I was okay. an assistant in 77 uh, to uh, 87. Okay. And so what, you know, what was, what was um, maybe tell us a little bit about what your perception of the city was at, in when you came to the East, took over at Rand, and then what you felt like you needed to do when taking over Rand. Well, I'll tell you, my perception of the city was it was going to be a great place. And uh, uh, I always had aspirations of maybe, you know, going to the state or uh, something of that nature. And I knew it would never be at Mohawk. So I was so happy to be in Youngstown and just fortunate to get the Rand job. And I had a, a whole, just a whole great line of kids that came through uh, uh, the north side. And, 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 you know, you can say what you want. Uh, they say, oh, you're a great coach. The team won when you got there. Well, I don't I don't believe that. I think that if Ron had been at Ryan and had those great kids, it would have been the same thing. They would have won anyways. You know, I, I, 
as a as a coach at a city school, the thing that you had to do and you had to be on top of was you really had to be a disciplinarian. You you you, you know if the kid missed practice for me, he didn't play. If he missed practice, he didn't play. And uh, my first years at Rand, uh, this was what I did from three o'clock to three thirty. When we got out at three o'clock or ten minutes to three, we're supposed to be on the field at three thirty, and I was in my car going to the house of a kid and telling that kid that if he didn't get to practice, <laughs> then then he wasn't going to play on Friday, and because I said you can't be that sick. You know, you meet me at the door, you can't be that sick. I don't know, there were some kids that were really sick, but uh, most kids say, oh, I'll take a day off, I'll sleep in. And uh, I knew that that wasn't the way it was. So the kids would see me in my car driving around with a uh, attendance slip and making those kids get this get to practice. Now, I was told, oh, you can't let them practice. Well, I said, well, how the heck are we going to win? So I did let them practice. I guess I broke the rules there. Yeah, and so were you Were you teaching? Did you start teaching in 78 at Rand, or were you at a different city school, or what was – I was Well, at? Yeah, I was at East. I, I was teaching social studies, and when I went to Rand, I taught the same thing. It was uh, okay. senior uh, government. Okay. Yeah, and so what was the the competition like in the city? And and uh, you, you said you had some aspirations to 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 get to that next level. Um, oh, it, but, you know. it, it it was really fierce. Uh, uh, we started out uh, uh, the first year I was there. Uh, I think we ended up. Uh, I, I think it was four, four, and two the first year I was at Rand. And uh, w- one of the reasons for that was, is we had to get, we had to get the kids to think like we thought that, that football really mattered. And it wasn't just something that they could, you know, take advantage of because the girls like the football players. And uh, at any rate, uh, the, the second year I was there, that's when we had a lot of great kids. Uh, Terry Taylor, uh, Played 14 years in the NFL. Kenny Vaughn, uh, my quarterback, who, who who went to Harvard, uh, just some really great kids, and uh, uh, that's when we started to win. I think that year we were eight and two, and uh, so from then on out, uh, we had some pretty darn good teams. Yeah, and I and I was I was kind of reading. Um... 1985, the first uh, city team to make the playoffs, right? Top, top we four, were. four in the state. Yeah, I'll bet. I'll bet people wouldn't know that if if you said uh, if, if if you said who was the first city team to get in the playoffs. You know, the playoffs weren't. Uh, uh, I don't think they went into existence uh, until what the early 80s, or I forget. But uh, um, yeah, I think that that's that's about right. Yeah, I think uh, when when we talked to Coach Angle, he mentioned something about maybe like the mid seventies, and you mentioned about maybe that seventy four team. Oh right? yeah, 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 yeah. They were taken. Uh, Chang was undefeated in seventy four, and um, under Ed. Yeah, and. Um, uh, they didn't. They didn't. They were. They, there were playoffs then because they 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 beat Mooney that year and uh, they didn't get in. I know. I was. That was amazing. What a what a what a black eye uh, on the city. I always felt that that was that was really wrong. Uh, I didn't live in uh, uh, PA at that time. Uh, I was living in Ohio at that time when I had gotten married, but. Uh, I followed city football, you know, just through the Vindicator and whatnot. Yeah. But I just couldn't believe that Cheney didn't get in. Yeah, and I think um, we had talked, you know, a couple episodes ago, and I can't remember, but, you know, certainly um, 
up until about um, maybe 2012, 2010, probably, um, you know, you, you had four teams making the playoffs in, in your regions. Um, well, when, when we made the playoffs, there were only two teams from each region got okay. picked. And uh, okay. uh, I'll tell you what, we were lucky to get in. I'll tell you why. Uh, there was a uh, there was a woman down at the uh, the, uh, the state, and uh, we had a we had a tie with the Pennsylvania. No, we had a win against the Pennsylvania team, uh, Erie McDowell, and uh, every win that Erie McDowell piled up, we got points for it, and so. At the time, this is incredible. I would call her every week and tell her if we won or we lost. And if we won, we got the points. And we only made it by just bare minimum points. But we were the second team uh, from our district that got in. And at that time, it was really tough to get into the state. And who did you, do you remember who you played? In, yeah, in we played. We, st- uh, we were a Division three team because uh, the North Side was the, uh, you know, North North High School was the smallest city school. But uh, as the community, uh, uh, Ryan was, uh, was very small, so we were uh, Division three. And uh, the first game we played against, uh, and it was at YSU because we were the host team. And we played Warren JFK, and we beat Warren JFK. And then the second game, they were going to take the game away from us because they said, "Well, you didn't get enough fans there." You know, we, we always didn't. We didn't get a whole lot of fans to come to our games. You know, and uh, I complained about it. I said, "Well, that's you know, that's that's not right. You're going to punish my kids because the fans won't come out." And so we played Struthers at YSU as well, and we beat Struthers. And then we were to play Orville, and uh, we lost to Orville in the Final Four. Yeah, that's and that not... was only twenty-one to uh, eighteen, I think. Yeah, that's a that's a historic program there um, as well. And it was Tony Napolet, Coach Napolet at JFK at the time. No, I don't think Tony was uh, the guy. The guy that was at Warren was the fellow that he went up to Twinsburg. He left there, and then re- Tony replaced him. Okay. But I, I did play Warren JFK when I was at Can- uh, Kennedy Catholic. Okay. And Tony um, was there. When did you what? what uh, when did you win your first city title? I, I, I think it was 83 or 84. And then, of course, in 85, we won it. And uh, a couple of other times in, in the 80s. I, I think we were the city champions when that 89 game occurred. I don't, I don't remember exactly. I don't have the stats in front of me. Yeah, so you, I mean, it, it, I think that's the thing, right? Like the the city was was very competitive, and you know, it seems like teams had some runs for a couple of years when you had certain kids come through. But um, you know, even even looking at <clears throat> when Ron first started, uh, all those games were nip talk. I mean, it, your first two years when you go or three years when you go one and nine, two and eight, one and nine, those are battles. One play here or there against Ran and. It just seems like you mentioned earlier, very competitive and, and uh, competitive time. Absolutely. It, it was, uh, I, I think, most people thought that our big rival was South, but our kids really, really, really wanted to beat Cheney uh, uh, more than anything. So if you would ask my boys what they thought was their big rival, and they would say Cheney. No matter how good they were or how bad they were, it was always Cheney. Mm-hmm. And uh, why do you why do you think that was? 
I, I, I don't know. And, and that's just what's the culture when I got to uh, uh, Rayan. Uh, maybe Pat Ungaro uh, uh, created that situation or the guy before him. What was his name? He was a legendary coach. Sapashi? Uh, yeah, yeah. Bob Sapashi? Yes. And, uh, you know, uh, just when I got there, uh, you know, just getting the feel of the kids, who do you want to play the most? And it was always changing. So, you know, we had, we had talked about um, what we've done on the podcast has kind of highlighted some of the legendary coaches and, and, and really the tradition, right? The, the, the thing that's always amazed me and what I would talk to Ron about over the years and specifically lately is, you know, just, only four head coaches in the history of, you know, the 75, 80 year history of Cheney. And so, you know, we've done that and we kind of started going through, it's kind of taking a path of going through each year. And, and so, you know, we get through 87, 88, 89, and, you know, I guess you kind of caught on to it a little bit. And it was talking about that 89 game where um, Cheney's real close at the end and you reached out to Ron and, and kind of facilitated the conversation. So um, maybe talk a little bit about that and, and um, you know, maybe give a, a, a summary of what uh, what we're kind of talking right. about. I, I, I will do that. And, and you know, I, I, never, I never divulged what happened in that game. But I'm, what I'm going to tell you is the truth. And I put a lot of thought into it. And it was uh, one of the games that, you remember the rest of your life, Be- not so much because we won, but because of the furor <laughs> that I experienced after that game. And uh, as you know, uh, we had an injury late in the game, and uh, I was accused of faking an injury, and uh, I-, I did not do that. But I'll tell you what did happen. Uh, it was a fourth quarter, uh, and Cheney had the ball with about three and a half minutes to go. And the score was Cheney 14 and Ryan had 12. We can never kick an extra point to save our lives. But uh, Cheney had the ball, and uh, we had all our timeouts, but uh, it was first down, and uh, Cheney gained about two yards, and I called timeout. And then second down, uh, we gained one yard, and uh, I called timeout. Uh, uh, Cheney gained one yard, and uh, I called timeout again. And on third down, uh, I forget who your quarterback was, Ron, but uh, I can remember he dropped back to pass. Uh, he didn't see anybody. He scrambled, and he went out of bounds. And I looked at Jimmy Gallo, my defensive coordinator, and said, when that kid ran out of bounds, it was like a godsend because it stopped the clock. Well, on fourth down, you got a great punt off, and it rolled dead to my recollection about the 20 yard line with two and a half minutes to go. Uh, so now it's ran ball on first down. Uh, we got a five yard gain. Uh, second down, we got a three yard gain. I called the last time out at that point. And we fake our go-to play, which was that wishbone. The ball would be in the hands of the left halfback, and the fullback and the right halfback would lead up and smash the linebacker. And we could we could usually get three or four, maybe five yards on that play. And a lot of times we broke it for touchdowns. So that was our main play, and uh, we did have option football involved, but we did some smash mouth stuff too. So at any rate, on third down, we faked that 24 blast that I talked about, and uh, the quarterback did not hand off, dropped back and hit Craig Powell uh, with a pretty long pass. The, 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 The Cheney halfback came up to make the tackle on the, on on the run and uh, Paul got behind him and, and, and people didn't know about Craig Paul 
he ran he ran like a, a 10 8 10 9 uh, 100 meter dash uh, he was a fast kid he was 6 4 you know uh, 220 pounds uh, but he caught that ball and as he caught it he was stumbling and and uh, he he went down on the 9 yard line and so uh, at that point the clock stopped and it was decided at that point uh, that we were going to run that play, that 24 blast, every down until we got it into the end zone. And uh, at any rate, uh, uh, as what I can remember, the first down, we gained about five yards. We were running that 24 blast. Uh, second down with a three-yard gain. <laughs> Uh, and I, I called the last time out at that point, and we only had maybe 13, 12 seconds left. And uh, uh, we, uh, at, at that point, uh, we we decided that uh, uh, we were going to run that 24 blasts on third down, and. Uh, uh, the kid that was carrying the ball, Jamal Smith. You have to understand something about Jamal. Jamal was one of the brightest kids I've ever coached. He went to Holy Cross and graduated with honors from Holy Cross. And uh, uh, at any rate, uh, he was carrying the ball, and he was short. They stopped us, and we had no timeouts left, and there were maybe 10 seconds left on the clock. Well, when that occurred, he started screaming. He was on his back. He started screaming like he was in mortal pain, just screaming his, oh, like a banshee. And uh, I ran out on the field. Uh, the referees called timeout. Uh, uh, I don't think we had a doctor then. A, a trainer came out. I went down, and Jamal just kept screaming like he was really, really in pain. And uh, – uh, as I went down on one knee and I tried to calm him down, his mother came out of the stands. Now she's screaming and yelling and it's chaos. Those poor referees didn't know what was going on. And she was going, my boy, my boy, he, oh my God. And at any rate, uh, he grabbed me by the shirt and pulled me down to his face mask. And he said, coach, I am not hurt. I just played hurt. So we get that extra down, and we knew what we were going to do. We were going to run 24 blast, and we did, uh, and uh, we won the game. Uh, after the game, uh, we, you know, when you play those games at YSU, uh, you go back and, and you're in your locker room at YSU until the buses go around. And they would wait till the crowd kind of thinned out before we could go back to the school. And when I walked out of the uh, dressing room, uh, the locker room, uh, I was attacked by Mike Butch and a bunch of officials saying that I was a cheat and I cheated Cheney out of the win. And that I faked a, 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 an injury to win a game. And I didn't say anything. I just kept walking. And they just were barking at my heels. And uh, uh, a lot of them were calling me all kind of names. And then this wasn't the Cheney staff. This was guys. Uh, Mike Butch was there. God rest his soul. But, you know, Ron, Mike had a lot of followers there. He's still, he's still alive. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that's great to know. But uh, <laughs> at any rate, uh uh, those guys were really on me, and uh, I just didn't say anything. That night, I got a call from the vindicator, and they said, well, how do you feel about cheating? And I said, what do you mean cheating? They said, well, you called, you, you had an injury, and, and you got an extra time, and you won the game. And I said, well, I said, uh, uh, that, that, that's just the way it was. Uh, in those days, they didn't have, I don't think they had uh, a penalty where, like they do now, they run it off into the, uh, were, whoops, 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 where they, where they run it off and into the, uh, they, they keep a 
uh, they run off the clock. And if that rule had been in effect, they would have run that clock off and we would have lost. But at any rate, they didn't have that rule then. But I was accused of that I faked an injury. And I thought to myself, I said, you know what? That kid is 17 years old. And Jamal came out of the game. All right. Now, now it gets juicy here. Now, the reason why everybody thought that that it was a fake, that they literally carried that kid off the field. And he's on the sideline. And Ron, you may attest to this, but when he when we scored that touchdown, he ran 40 yards full barrel, jumped onto the pile. And everybody that knew anything about it, and Mike Butch saw that, and the other officials saw that, uh, Chuck Samaron was in that group. He saw that, and they were criticizing me. And uh, it, it was, it, you know, it was just uh, something that occurred. And the kid did it on his own. And later I asked the kid, I said, hey, what in the world? Where did you get that from? And they said, "Well, we had watched a, he had watched an Ohio State game, and and they didn't have those rules in college at that time either. And everybody in football at the collegiate level had a, a fake uh, injury thing, you know, where they they would stop the clock. Well, I thought, well, Turco, you, you're you're two hundred and uh, 80 pounds, you can shoulder this. Uh, I just let people think that I was, uh, I, I called that uh, play and uh, uh, I was the one that uh, uh, was the uh, the culprit that decided that I was going to call a play and uh, make sure that it, it, it stopped the clock. But I didn't. The boy did it. But I didn't want people to jump on the boys. Uh, you know, he was 17 years old. Well, he didn't score the touchdown, of course, because he was on the sidelines. So Lamont Finley, who was an excellent blocker, he was our right tailback. He was uh, uh, in that wishbone set. He, 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 he smashed that linebacker. And uh, 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 and we would get all kind of uh, yards from him blocking like that. But uh, I moved him over to the left half back, and he was the one that scored the touchdown. And we had a sub in there. But, you know, I had great players, and uh, uh, it, it, it looked like that uh, we did – fake an injury because Jamal ran that 40 yards and jumped on the pile and was jumping up and down and he wasn't hurt. Well, that I got that call from the vindicator saying, well, you, you, you cheated to beat Cheney. What do you think about that? And I said, well, I'll tell you what, I'm not going to even address that, but uh, I'll tell you what I, what, what I'll give you a quote. I'd rather be lucky than good. And uh, that's where that thing came out. It said in a newspaper, I'd rather be lucky than good. And uh, uh, everybody thought that I did that. And uh, But it was the boy. He, he did it on his own. And But I took the blame for it. But uh, yeah. that's, not, <laughs> that's how I recommend it. That's how yeah. I recommend it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the controversy is because that's that's how we we explained it, right? Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah I so mean, I, I, I number one, we should have never been in that situation. We had control of the game, and we should have never. Uh, uh, Jimmy Lapata should have never ran out of bounds. Uh, we should have maintained possession, uh, and we should have never got beat by Paul to get down on the nine. That, you know, that, that's how we looked at the game after it was over. No one came back in the locker room saying, uh, you know, we got cheated out of a win. No. No, that that was not you, Ron. That was not you. No, Ron. yeah, I know. I, I, I get that. But, but my, I just want you to know, my our discussion was, hey, listen, you know, you played good enough to win. You shouldn't have been in that position. You shouldn't have been in that controversial position 
Now, as far as uh, the the timeouts and time, the last play that you ran, okay, there wasn't enough time to line up and run another play. Mm -hmm. I mean, the game from 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 our standpoint was over. Right, right, right. Now, exactly. when the kid went down, I mean, he went down. I mean, protocol in that scenario, and I had a discussion with. Johnny Patton was the official, I believe, uh, in the end zone that was next to the young man. And he, he it should have, it should have been when the kid was down, he should have went to the kid and said, are you okay? Are you okay? By that time, the game's over. But soon as the kid went down, bellowed or went down, he chopped it. He he stopped it. Okay, and, and okay. that 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 enabled it to go. But um, yeah, we we didn't think a play was called that was saying, "Listen, if you don't get in on this play, fake fake an injury." No, we assumed that the, the kid did it on his own. Yeah, well, I I I believe you, but see it. it that furor that happened in the hallways uh, of the uh, uh, YSU, where those guys followed me out of there screaming and yelling, and they were really upset, uh, you know, that, that I cheated, I, I faked an injury to win a game. And, and, and uh, it wasn't your staff or anybody on your staff. It, it was just a mistake by the officials. That you didn't win. Yeah, you, you just you just happen to be the front man. First of all, Samrone, uh, Chuck Samrone's involved on in that discussion. His son's playing. He, he's one of the players on the field. Sure. Yeah. Mike Butch is a is a West Sider. He's looking at the mechanics of the official and saying, you know, it it didn't go down right. Well, that, that's exactly. on, that's on his officials. Oh, but, exactly, but, exactly. But, but I will say. And I got, you know, no dog in this fight. Whether, whether you, you know, as a head coach, set it up. Um, I mean, I'll be, I'll be honest with you, Dick Angle. I think we beat Warren Harding to kick a field goal because our backup tight end happened to roll his ankle. I, you know, I mean, it's it's as old as 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 it as as playing the game. Um, but the kid did fake an injury. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? Whether whether you know the coaches in the game, yeah, you know, orchestrated or not. But I I did not know that you know you you took that much heat from uh, from well, the, the, the other heat, people. The heat that I really really uh, resented was uh, I can understand Mike Butch and Sam Maroon being upset and uh, following me out, but. For the vindicator to take that storyline, that that kind of got me riled up. But I wasn't going to, you know, tell him that uh, I didn't do that and the boy did it. But, yeah, no, I for sure. And it's funny because I think so. W when I look this stuff up, I look at the West Side Saga book, which has the vindicator articles. And it's funny because that was one of the things that I remember from from the article. It, it didn't give any context of what we're talking about, um, but it did it did give that line of "I'd rather be lucky than good." So it's just well, kind you of know who else called, that. you know who else called me Jim Camel, and Jim said, "Hey, you called it. You you call you told that kid to fake an injury." And I said, "I told him I'd rather." I said, "No, I'm only the only quote that I'm going to make about this game." is I'd rather be lucky than good. And I was trying to convey that, yeah, we were lucky to win the game, and uh, and Cheney should have won it. Uh, who was superintendent at that time, Ron? I, I don't remember. Uh, it would have been uh, hmm. uh, Cat, would it have been Katsoulis, maybe? No, no, no. Pagese, maybe? Well, Pagese? Well, all I remember, I think it was Pegues. He he gave me the job at Bryant. Uh, if I would not have gotten that job, 
if it hadn't been for Bob McGee. He gave me that job. He said, you're going to go over there and you're going to take those kids under your wing and you're going to do this. And I said, I'll do exactly whatever I have to. And uh, uh, he, he called me and he said, did you fake an injury to win the game? <laughs> It would have um, been it would have been Cat Souls. It would because that's well, who hired me. It was Manny, one of the two. But Manny said, "Did you fake an injury to win the game?" And I said, "No, sir." And he said, "Well, I know you wouldn't lie to me. That's all I have to say about it." Yeah, I mean, <laughs> this, if nothing else, if nothing else out of it, it segued into a great rematch the following year in 1990. Oh, absolutely. For it, for, where the city championship was on the line. Yeah. Do you remember what I told you after that? Uh, I met, I met you after, yeah. Where, where, in 90? You're talking about? Well, I'm not sure when it was in 90 or could have been. I, 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 I met you when you beat us. And I said to you, I said, Ron, congratulations. You're gonna you're gonna dominate the city from here on out because I knew you were going to. I, I I do I do remember that. Yeah, yeah. And yeah that's I one of the reasons. That's also one of the reasons why I left. Yeah. Um, why you left? What do you mean by that? When when I, why I stopped being the coach at Rand. And I went, um, over to, I went over to Kennedy. There were a lot of reasons why I, I left Ray in coaching. But uh, uh, one of the reasons was I, I thought uh, Cheney was going to dominate the city. And the other reason was I, I was tired of going to funerals uh, of kids getting shot down that played for me. You know, there was a, a, a week. The 14 years that I was at Ray, and we put 80 kids at Division I schools, scholarships. So I should have had a good run, you know. You had that many kids get Division I scholarships. They all didn't graduate, but over half of them did. And uh, and, and, and uh, ones that did not, uh, you know, they... they you know, there was one kid, Johnny Wilson. He worked in Chicago uh, in the post office. It had a great life. Uh, it was, you know, wonderful uh, kids that played for me, whether they graduated from college or whether they didn't. But the ones that got left home, uh, that was a tough thing. I, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna, I'll tell you a little quick anecdote. When, when I had that. Uh, uh, that Hall of Fame thing, May 1st, uh, Sterling Haywood uh, was one of the kids that came back. Uh, the Haywood boys went to Southern Illinois, as did Terry Taylor. And uh, uh, Sterling said to me, he says, hey, coach, my mother, I was getting ready to leave. My son-in-law got the car and he 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 was ready to pick me up and Sterling got out of an SUV and he said, coach, my mother wants to talk to you. And uh, uh, her name was Jackie and, and Jackie made the best barbecue chicken you could ever lay your lips on. Oh, it was so good. She always sent it to our, our coaching staff, but uh, she's in the back seat and she's this frail little old lady. And she says, coach Turco, I, I want to thank you. And I said, well, for what? I, I should thank you. Your two sons were fantastic for me. You know, one of the reasons why we were so successful. And uh, she said, oh, no, you, you saved their lives. And I said, what do you mean I saved their lives? She said, you got them out of Youngstown. Because Youngstown was a rough, rough town back in those days, you know. Uh, when we were kids, if, if we had a beef with somebody, we, you know, fought them with our fists. Well, they, they started using guns back in those days. And uh, she said, thanks, because you got my voice to Southern Illinois and they never went back. So that was really nice to hear that she thought that. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, when did you stop coaching at Rand? 
I believe it was 92. Yeah, so that's that's around the time when the dynamic really changed and there was a lot of murders going on, um, yeah. you know, throughout the throughout the city. Um, yeah, so you, you see you saw quite a bit. Um, so circling back to I did not realize that you when did all that that conversation with the uh, with the flop or whatever you want to term it, when did that start to calm down? Was that the end of the year? Was, was that kind of like... It, 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 I don't think it lasted. Uh, I don't know. I didn't. I never mentioned it to the kids again. Yeah. And uh, Jamal w- w- went on to Holy Cross, and he never came back, uh, to my knowledge. And uh, But uh, that, I don't know. That just, that's how it happened. And we were just lucky to beat Cheney that year we certainly were yeah it's funny um I mean it's funny the the uproar that came from it I mean you could watch a SEC ESPN game um <laughs> with all this no huddle stuff they guys just get sniper shot from the lights all the time um nowadays so it's <laughs> I, I'll tell you another thing that uh when when the game was over my coaches were, you know, at YSU, you're in that, uh, uh, Ron, you'll remember that you get in that elevator and have to go down the elevator, right? right. And the elevator was always crowded. And so my, my coaches, Jeff Bruno and uh, John Protopapa were up in the mm-hmm. press box and uh, uh, Sam Aron and uh, Mike Butch got on the elevator and, and they were screaming at them. That they were, oh, you cheated to win. Ah. And they were going, no, no, we, we, were, we were up in a press box. We didn't have anything to do with it. And uh, th- that, that, was, th- that occurred too. So uh, that was like throwing gasoline on a fire, you know, because uh, people's emotions were really high about uh, who won and who lost. Yeah, and that was at the tail end of a really tough year for yeah. for, yeah. Uh, for those for, for the coaches, the kids, the fans. It's so close in so many games. And oh yeah, you, you, that '89 season, you lost about six or seven games by mere points or so, like eleven points. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that that was kind of the culminating uh, the culminating uh, event. You know, kind of. Um, the manifestation of everything that happened there, um, and 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 just so you know, um, it, it was kind of a, a funny anecdote that Ron would tell, and and you know, and it, it was never like this uh, egregious thing that happened. Um, no, I, 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 I from I his perspective, yeah. But I just decided that after thirty three years, I just I I just. <laughs> Come clean what really did happen. And I would never tell a kid fake an injury. I, I, that, that wasn't me. I wouldn't do that. But he did that on his own, and uh, we won the game as a result of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and so, you know, after after you leave, you you go to Kennedy and, and um, very, very successful there and, and – um, how long did you? How long were you coaching after um, your time at Rain? Uh, I coached uh, nine years at Kennedy, and then I went over to Lowellville for two years, and uh, then uh, I went with Paul Holia. Uh, so that was let's see nine. Uh, 11, Julio was uh, 13, and then one year at Cheney when I, uh, before I retired. Mm. So about 14 years. But I always stayed in uh, the city schools to teach. Okay. Oh, um, always at Rand, or did you move? Well, I, I, I stayed at Rand until they tore the building down. <laughs> and, uh, 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 then I went over to Cheney the last two years. Okay. That I okay. I wanted to I wanted to teach for forty years because I, I didn't retire till I was sixty seven. But if you taught for forty years, you 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 retired at one hundred percent of your top three years. 
And God so bless you. To this day, uh, I, 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 that was always my uh, motivation for staying on and continue to teach. But you know what? I, I, my last 10 years, I was teaching OWA, OWE, and Ron will tell you, OWE is uh, work experience, uh, getting kids jobs. And uh, these were at risk kids. And uh, uh, some people would say, well, uh, these kids are at risk, but let's get them out of the building. And uh, so they were allowed to leave like at 11 o'clock. And I wasn't allowed to go home then, but uh, uh, I, I, I would go to like a McDonald's and get a kid a job or a Burger King and get a kid a job. And those kids would lose jobs because they'd swear at their bosses and, and uh, then I'd have to get them another job. But I had 51 kids when I was at Rayan, and I brought that over to Cheney. There were like 50 some kids at Cheney in my program. And I taught them all the subjects. And, uh, uh, but the, the amazing thing was they did a study and uh, they figured that Rayan had the highest graduation rate of any of the city schools. And uh, they couldn't understand why. Why, that, why, why would that so? Or, or, what were we so good? And uh, the principal at Rayan told me, she said, uh, you know, John, the reason why is because you had all those kids in those work programs that graduated who would have quit school if it hadn't been for that. And the state only required you to have 15 kids in your class, but I had 50 kids in the class. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, it, it was a it wasn't so hard teaching those last 10 years. You know, I'm only in the classroom for three hours. So all I had to do is show up and uh, make sure that everything was good. And uh, I, I'd make sure they got out of school. Yeah. Um, how many years? I know you retired, but how many years have you been, you know, teaching even, even after your retirement? I mean, it, Counting the retiree hire? Yeah, yeah. Um, I retired from Youngstown City at 36, eight, eight at Southern, um, and two at uh, Reserve. Jeez. So 46. Holy, oh, you guys, I'll tell you what. I, <laughs> uh, yeah, we I, hope I'm, I hope I'm healthy enough to teach. Uh, we, I, uh, I don't think I'm going for it. You, gotta, you, you have to be a very special person to teach in Youngstown, uh, especially during those days. And uh, I loved it. I, it you know, it, it was it was never boring. You went to school. You, you knew it wasn't going to be the same old day. Uh, something would happen exciting, you know. Uh, and uh, it, was, it was just an exciting time for me. Yeah, and I remember I, 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 uh, I grew up um, on the north side of my sister – graduated from Rayan. Um, so, you know, I, I remember seeing those, those teams, um, no, not, you know, knowing some of those names. I remember when, you know, Rayan won the, the state championship in basketball and, and how, how good, um, you know, some of those players were. You know, that, uh, and, that, 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 not to interrupt you, but that 85 team where we went to the final four, Ran won the state championship in basketball, and they mm -hmm. won the state championship in track. Mm -hmm. So that that's and, and we didn't have that many kids. They all played. They, you know, most of them played everything. Uh, the the only two basketball players that didn't play uh, football were Joe James and uh, Jones kid. Uh, I forget his last name, but one went to uh, Michigan and one went to uh, West Virginia. But, uh, uh, you know, we had great athletes. That's all. Uh, how many, how many schools can say, Hey, we want to, we went to the final four in football. We won a state championship in basketball and we won a state championship in track. And not many schools could say that. Not a lot of public schools, right? Nope, no, not, absolutely yeah. not. So, um, no, I, I, 
I, anything you want to kind of add, Ron? I mean, I, I think, uh, I, I just want to say, you know, it's, it's, uh, this is the first time I've got to maybe sit and talk with you, but coaching for Ron, going to, we were talking before we started recording, going to seven on sevens and seeing you at Sharon Kennedy and, and, uh, seeing you at Louisville and getting to hear you talk a little bit. Um, you know, it's, it's nice to be able to talk to some guys who've made a difference, um, in the kids' lives they've coached. I think that's probably the real legacy of what's remembered and, and, um, what's meaningful to those guys. So, um, you know, I just want to thank you for coming on and doing this. And Ron, do you have anything you wanted to? Just uh, first, uh, uh, congratulations on your induction in the curbstone. Um, well, you know, I, 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 that was three years in the coming. Uh, the <coughs> pandemic put it back <laughs> uh, 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 three years. Uh, so uh, uh, it was either I, I stayed alive to get it, <laughs> or it would have been like poor Phil who got it after he passed. And yeah. uh, but at any rate, uh, it was a very nice affair. And uh, I had six tables of kids uh, uh, from Kennedy and uh, Boosters, and uh, I-, I thought so much of that. And those kids and those people that helped me along the way, I paid sixty dollars a piece for each one of those people to come, and they came, and they didn't want me to pay. They could. They said, "Oh, well, I'll give you the money." I said, "No, no. This is how I'm going to repay you." And so I had six tables of uh, people come to that event, and it was very nice. Yeah, it's a great event. It's a great event. So, any final thoughts? I don't know why more more city coaches didn't get selected for that. I, I do know this that as a as a member uh, of the Curbson Coaches Hall of Fame, now I'm allowed to uh, uh, nominate people, and I'm going to do that in the future. And so there would be other city coaches, I would hope, that along the way get into that Curbstone Ho- Coaches Hall of Fame because we were the best coaches of anybody. Uh, you could talk about Mooney, uh, Dickie, Dickie Angle. I, I, I love to agitate Dick. but uh, I heard he loves to agitate you too. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I, we, would, we, would, we would go to the Lions Club. You remember those days, Ron? We'd go to the sure. Lions Club sure. and uh, talk about our teams. And Butchie would grab me and he'd say, what are you going to do? What are you gonna, how are you going to agitate Engel? He wanted me to agitate him because he didn't want to do it himself. And uh, uh, I, would, I would make cracks at him. I, I'd say, hey, you ever remember him? He would always have uh, uh, that bright the green uh, shirt on and green shorts on with uh, stri- uh, gold stripes down the legs. And you got to be know. nice here. I'm a nursling. I'm a nursling. Grandma. Yeah, I know. Nice. But I, I would say to, I, I would say to Dick uh, on, I, I, when I had the microphone, I'd say, "Hey, Dick, who dressed you tonight? Your wife?" And uh, Butchie would fall on the floor laughing because he he wanted me to to uh, agitate him. But Angle agitated me a lot too. He called me one one Christmas Eve and said that uh, I told the state that uh, uh, he was trying to recruit my kids and uh, that he was going to get fired as a result of it. And I said, "No, nah, I didn't tell the state that you were going to you were recruiting my kids." And but that's what he thought. Christmas well, Eve. I got a phone call from Dick Angle saying that. <laughs> well, Coach Angle might call us and say, hey, I got some stuff to refute from the Turco episode. <laughs> 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 no, I uh, I guess I just want to thank you for doing it. It's, um, you know, it's 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 a treat for me to listen to some oh, of your stories. It's a treat for me, too, Dallas, and, and, yeah. and seeing uh, 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 Ron and, and – Knowing what he did for the city of Youngstown uh, uh, just makes me proud that I was part of it too. Yeah, well, 
we uh we thank you and um anything and no stay healthy yeah that's the, the you know each day we wake up and if we wake up it's great i'm 80 now i don't know how old you are ron but i'm 80 yeah i just turned 70 okay all right well uh, you're a young guy <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't know about that we uh well thank you and um you know we appreciate the 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 back and forth and and the, the inside stories and and um you know, it's been good. So thank um, you very much for having me on.